Hello and welcome to a new episode of R for Excel users. Today we're going to learn more about the manipulation of data frames. Let's use the same data set that we used in the previous episode. I've already defined the data frame in R. Let's now say that we want to add a new column to it. In R terminology, we want to add a new variable. In Excel, that will look like this. Let's add, for example, the cost of goods sold. 1,000, 2,000, 3,500. How do we do it in R? We could simply write the F dollar sign the name of the new variable or column, and then a vector with the new values. Let's visualize our data frame. And let's also check its structure. Let's now add a calculated variable. In Excel, we could write and then enter a formula. We can then replicate the formula for all the rows. And now in R, we can write the F dollar sign, the name of the new calculated variable, assign an operator, and then the formula. We now have a new column, margin, which means a new variable, that contains the difference between sales and cost of goods sold. Note now one difference between Excel and R. If I change the cost of goods sold for this line, for example, 900, Excel automatically recalculates the margin, and this is because this is a live formula. In the case of R, this does not happen, and therefore what you need to do after having changed the cost of goods sold value is to rerun the calculation for the margin column. Note here that the margin has not changed, but if we rerun the formula, in the R Studio you can use arrow up to access previous commands. Now the margin column has been updated. This will become indeed much easier once we learn about scripting in R. You may now wonder if there is a more concise way to write formulas in R, and indeed there is, especially when working within the same data frame. In the case of the previous calculation, we could have used the width function. Using the width function, the formula becomes width, and then the data frame that we are working with, and now we can shorten the formula just by using the column names, or in our terminology, variable names which leads exactly to the same result. In this way, we don't have to write every time the F dollar and then the name of the variable. Now, let's assume that we don't need the cogs variable any longer. How do we delete that column? In R, that will be the F dollar sign, the name of the variable, sign an operator, no. And as you can see, the cogs column has disappeared. If we do the same in Excel by deleting the D column, we get the problem is that the formula here do not work any longer because they refer to a cell that is no longer there. We don't have the same problem in R where the margin column stays in place because it has already been calculated. Let's undo that. Copy the values. Paste special values. And now we can safely remove the cogs column. Let's now see how to add a row to a data set, which means to a data frame in R. In Excel, we could simply write But how do you do it in R? Let's make a copy of our data frame because we are about to make a serious mistake. This has saved our original data frame in df.copy so we can get back to it later. We could think to add a new row to our data frame by referencing the next empty line, which will be line 5. df5 and then a vector with the new values. When we try to do so, we get a warning from R. The warning we get involves factors, but there is something more that happened to our data frame. Let's visualize its structure and also its content. You will now note that on row 5, the name we have entered, mark, does not appear. We get an NA instead. And this is because mark is not a level of the original factor in the name variable. Our previous operation created also another side effect. Note that the variable sales and margin, which used to be numeric, are now characters. The reason is that the vector we used to define the new line started with a character value, mark, and as a vector can only have one data type, everything in there was turned into a character. This is definitely not what we want. Let's now see the right way to do it. First, let's get back our original data frame. The correct way to add an extra row to a data frame is to use R bind. Here's the syntax. And here are the values for the new row. Now 
Note two things here. We are, are binding the data frame onto itself, so the new row will be appended to it. And second, we are naming the variables which we are adding. So we have to write data frame, name equal mark, says equal to thousand, area equal south, margin equal 950. This will tell R to recalculate also the levels of the factors so that we don't get any longer the previous warning. And more important, a correct result. This will also have the effect to preserve the type of the variables. And here is our new row, row 5. Let's take a look at the structure. As you can see, name is now a factor with five levels with mark added to it, while sales and margin are still of numerical type. This is it for what concerns the manipulation of data frame. I hope you have enjoyed it. Next time, we'll be looking at how to filter and order data in the data frame. Till next time, bye.